Welcome back. This is going to be for activity four, a very short section. So what do we need to do for activity four? Activity four is where we actually do the stuff we said we were going to do. So a system assembly and programming. All that means is that you're going to sit down, you're going to actually physically build your circuit. You're not going to do any more diagrams here unless you want to go back and change something. You're going to sit down, make your circuit. And for each component which you've added, you're going to program the logic. So you're going to sit down using C, Python, C++, Java, JavaScript, whatever language you've decided to use. This is where you're going to sit down and do it. So this is called the implementation section. It should roughly take 2.5 hours or so two and a half hours in total. So remember, you're supposed to try and stick to um, as closely as you can anyway to your plan, your initial Gantt chart plan. You don't have to. This doesn't have to take two and a half hours. You can take two hours to do it. If you're quick enough, you can. That's no problem. So we're going to put all the pieces together. We're going to build your circuit. So connect all devices together. We're going to program the microcontroller to control the other devices. <clears throat> and we're going to add comments to every single section. Now, I prefer to add comments to every single line of code. So it's very explicit and clear what that line of code is actually doing. Some people prefer to do a section at a time. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do line by line and I'm going to also go back and just explain maybe um, a chunk of the program at, at a time. So maybe explain what a particular function does, what a particular while loop does, as well as do the individual lines. So we're going to decompose the problem and that simply means to break it down into smaller sections. We're going to work based on the logic from the pseudocode and or the flowchart. If possible, build a circuit a section at a time. So let me just explain what that means quickly. What I would do, the most integral part of the system, I would start with that. So in this case, for the 2022 past paper I've been working through, it's been um, not the motion sensor, it's been, it's been the hall sensor, right? I would get the hall sensor working first, printing the values I needed to print, detecting the magnet first. That's the very first thing I would do. And then from there, I would start building up the extra functionality around it. So maybe if there's a magnet, turn green LED on. If there's no magnet, turn red LED on. But first and foremost, get the hall sensor working. This also allows you to test the individual components and test each section at a time. So you don't have to build the entire thing and then think about testing. So when programming, as I've said before, make sure add a comment to every single line if that's something you're capable of doing. If not, I think every section being explained in a comment is okay, but I prefer doing every line. But again, I'm going to do both. Here I say for each component, you have to build it and then test it. So as I've said before, I'm going to have my hall sensor. I'm going to connect it to my Raspberry Pi Pico. I'm going to build the circuit, obviously. Then I'm going to program it and test if it works. I'm going to bring a magnet close to it and see if it actually detects a magnet. And that's it. That's all you need to do. Now, some of the stuff you do here in section four can actually be used to build up um, your test section because I believe it was activity two where you had to sit down and actually come up with a test plan. Some of the stuff you came up with in your test plan you can do here as well. Simple things like maybe testing if the hall sensor can actually make the buzzer work. Build up the, the logic of your system by adding individual sections and testing those individual sections. Then you bring everything together. So I've said this a million times before, we're going to simplify the problem, build the circuit, program it, test it, repeat until all the tasks are completed. So we're not going to just build one massive thing at once. We're going to build it incrementally, add the functions together, and then the system is complete. I'm going to do my system in a function, well, in multiple functions. Um, and again, functions must be at the very top. You have to actually create your function before you use it at the bottom. So I'm going to show how to create a function, which I've done in previous videos. So if you need to see that, go back and watch that. I'm going to use functions. I'm going to use if statements, while loops. I'm going to be jumping back and forth between functions. I'm going to show everything. Now, one thing you do want to ensure is that you follow the pseudocode or flowchart and the circuit diagram which you designed earlier, you can 100% make changes. But if you're going to make a change because something bad happened and you're not sure how to fix it, it's always a good idea to go back to your log book. So the activity one log, go back and make changes there. Say, well, in my second day or my second log, for example, I realized that this thing wasn't working the way I wanted it to. So I changed my, I don't know, my circuit diagram to incorporate something else, a different component instead. 
So as I've said, we're going to build and program, but even after you've built and programmed and commented, I still think you should go back and explain each section. And by explaining each section, I mean, for example, let's say I, I have a function that does a particular thing. I'm going to go back and explain the entire purpose of that function and how that function actually works. It might seem a bit redundant, but comments are very short, quick bits of information. I would do a paragraph for each major section or bullet points with a lot of detail. I prefer this option because it's just a lot easier for me. The, the way my brain works is a lot easier for me to read bullet points with information versus a paragraph. Choose whatever suits your style best. Simply ensure that you have enough detail in your sections.